Welcome to the GIS Data Dashboard. In this video, we're going to explain what the Data Dashboard is and how to use it. So let's start with what is the Data Dashboard. Here we see two of our amazing GIS students. And at GIS, we're really lucky that we have a huge range of data about these students. We have the GL series of CAT4, PASS and PROGRESS tests. We also have our in-house attendance data, our behavior reports, individual teacher mark sheets, our end of term reporting data on attitudinal and organizational behaviors. We have uh, the star reader data, like the reading age. We have concerns that are placed onto CPOMs. We also have merits and behavior points. We have involvement in sports activities like the dragons. The problem can be when you have a huge amount of data about a student that we start to crowd out a picture of the real student and we get overwhelmed with data. The data dashboard aims to make this less of a problem in the future. The data dashboard is made up of a series of inputs, things like attendance data, students lists and individual teacher mark sheets. All of those are combined into a database that lives on the GIS servers. What this allows us to do is then create a rich interface that lets teachers drill down into the data about each individual student. So what can it offer? The data dashboard has three main advantages. Firstly, it allows really good communication between teachers by letting us see the information that different departments and different areas of the school hold on the same student, we can get a better picture of the holistic progress of one student. It also allows us to create really rich graphics and animations to put data into context. Finally, the data dashboard allows us to drill down from a whole school level, down through pastoral or academic levels, down to the level of an individual student, all while looking at the same reports and the same charts. So let's get started with actually using the dashboard. You'll be given a link to gisportal.gardenschool.edu.my slash dashboard. When you first enter it, you'll be asked for a username and password. You can use the same username and password that you use to sign in to your Mac. It might take a few seconds to load the first time you do this, so you might want to pause the video here until it's loaded in front of you. When you are loaded, you'll see the home screen of the dashboard. There are various buttons on here to take you to different parts of the dashboard and different pages. If you find that there's information that's missing or doesn't make sense to you, we can always add and update this dashboard with new pages and new information as you might find it useful. Today, we're only going to concentrate on two pages, which are the end of term reports and the past progression. Now, do feel free to play around with any of these other reports. The dashboard is entirely read only. That means it can only take data from SIMS and display it. It is not possible to damage the data dashboard or to change anything that is on SIMS using this. So feel free to play around. If at any point you manage to lose your way and you're not sure how to get back, just go up to your browser and hit refresh. When you do that, you'll be given a clean new version of the data dashboard set back to its original settings. Let's start by looking at the past progression. When you first get to the past progression screen, you will see various filters at the top here. Right now, the data dashboard is showing us average values for every student in the whole school. So we can see that across the whole of GIS, the average CAT4 verbal score is 106. If we look at this radar diagram, we can see how the pass attitudes to learning are. So we can see, for example, that attitudes to attendance for this year were 70.66 on average. Remember that PASS is a percentile rank, and we would expect an average across a school to be 50%. So actually having the whole of GIS being at 70.66% shows that compared to the rest of the world, GIS has really good attitudes to attendance. Let's narrow this down to just year 10. 
To start with that, we're going to first choose key stage 4 from our key stage. You'll see straight away these different graphs have all updated. So we can see that in year t uh, across key stage 4, the average Cat 4 verbal is 109. Let's narrow this down further and look at year 10. So year 10 is broadly similar to the whole of key stage 4. Cat 4 verbal is 108. Now let's pick an individual tutor group, and I'm just going to pretend that I'm 10G's tutor. So I can see 10G is marginally stronger verbally than the rest of year 10. Now let's go and look at an individual student. In your version of this dashboard, these will be unanonymized, so you will see the student names appearing here, and you'll see a student photo over here. I'm just going to pick a student at random. So now I've selected a student, and now all of this data is showing just for this particular student. So on this page, you can see three different graphs. The first is the CAT scores, and I can see that this student has pretty high scores across all the CAT batteries, um, with a slight verbal deficit, uh, but still well above the national average. On this graph, I can see the students' pass scores. These go back as far as we have data. So I can see 2017 to 18, 2018 to 19, 19 to 20, and 20 to 21. By clicking on the individual pass score buttons, I can switch these off from the visualization. So now I'm only seeing this year's pass data. And we can see that this is a pretty encouraging set of past data. If I hover over any of these points, I can see the exact value for that past data. If I want to compare this year's past data to last year's past data, there are two things that I can do. I can turn it on and look for the gaps between 2019-20 and 2020-2021. So here I can see that this student has had an increase in their value on pass battery 2, which is learning capability. I can also see there's been a drop in pass 8, attitudes to attendance. All the other pass batteries are largely the same as last year. We've also summarized that in this graph here. This graph shows the change positive or negative compared to last year. So we can see that this student may well have really uh, done well from online learning because they feel like their perceived learning capability has increased. However, their attitudes to attendance have dropped. Again, not necessarily surprising considering we've been in online school. If I click to a different student, here we can see this student again has generally good uh, CAT4 scores with a maximum score on the spatial, but I can see that quite concerningly here there's been a big drop in this student's work ethic. Considering this student has a high spatial assessment score and generally high other pass areas, this means that this student could be in particularly large danger of underperforming next year. If you want to clear these filters, hover over the student and you'll see an eraser button. Click that and you're now back to seeing the whole of 10G. You can untick 10G and now you're seeing the whole of year 10. Unclick year 10 to see the whole of key stage 4 and unclick key stage 4 to see the whole year group. Let's go back to the home page. The second thing we're going to look at is the end of term reports. This page is a little bit more complicated and it shows everything from the year from the end of term reports that were released at the end of the last half term. Let's filter down to just one tutor group again. So I'm going to choose key stage 4, year 10, and I'm going to use 10G again. This is now again showing me the average across the year groups, and we can see here with the past data, on this graph we've plotted the average value of the past data, and this line shows the change in that from last year. So we can see that across 10G, in general, their past attitudes have increased, although only slightly compared to last year, with the, with the exception of general work ethic, which has decreased. 
let's pick an individual student here. When we're looking at one student, now we can see a bit more information. We can see here the Learning Conversations Day target set in the previous LCD. And we can also see the attitudinal and organizational behavior over time. These bars show when they were given a 2, a 3 or a 4 for each category. So I can see that this student uh, for their attitudinal behavior went from having uh, a couple of 2s in term 1.1, 1.2 and 2.1 to entirely getting 4s in term 2.2. I can also see that their organizational behavior seems to be improving over time as well, with the number of twos decreasing. If I want to see which teachers were giving this student, say, a three, I can click on this bar and it will filter the raw data. So I can see that Anushka gave them a three in term, uh, term 1.1 and Matty Smith gave them a three in term 1.1 as well, and so on. If I want to get rid of this filter, I can just click it again. On this graph, we have the residual. This is comparing their target grade to their current attainment grade. So looking down here, I can see that they are one grade below expectation for biology, one grade below for geography, and they've been one grade below for two terms consecutively. If you don't see a bar here, that means that they're getting their target grade. So let's give an example of that and scroll down to here. I can see that Miss Davis was expecting them to get an A star as their target uh, in term 1.2, but they were on an A. So that gave them a residual of minus 1. I can also see that that residual only came out in term 1.2. And in term 2.1, that's not the case. And that's also reflected in the data here because we can see that that's not appearing in the term 2.1 data. Again, if I want to go and change to another student, I can just select them from the drop down box here and switch it here. Here I can see that this student has a progress concern behavior incident. If I'd like to know more about that, I can click on that behavior incident and click the behavior details. That will take me to a page showing the data about that behavior incident, um, which I can then use to follow up with particular teachers or any other information that I need to look at. Again, when I finished, I can erase this to show the whole tutor group. And I could look at a different tutor group, or I could again just refresh the page and get back to a clean copy of the data dashboard. This is just a taster of what the dashboard can do. I'd love to hear any feedback you have, so please do let us know if there's anything that you think needs to be made clearer or the information that you would like to have added to this dashboard. Thanks for watching.